Hi everyone, I'm Zihang Zhang. Today we will introduce you our latest work in Bydance that scales the large language model training to more than 10,000 GPUs. This is a joint work of me, Haibin, Yiming, Xing, and many others on the slide. Large language models have emerged as a transformative technology in artificial intelligence. Recent advancements in LMs have significantly improved their capability. It has demonstrated potential in, in a wide range of domains, such as conversational agents, code development, content creation, etc. At Badance, we train large language models, and as the engineering team, we are responsible for the design and development of large scale systems that utilize over 10,000 GPUs, solving technical challenges related to system performance, reliability, and scalability. Now you may wonder, why is there your need to train models on, a, on such a massive scale? So back, back in 2020, researchers have found that the power behind langu large language models is scaling. The performance of LMs improves smoothly as we increase the model size, data set size, and amount of compute used for training. Empirical performance have a power law relationship with each, with each individual factor were not bottlenecked by, by the other two. To achieve state-of-the-art model capability, many efforts have been devoted to train large models with hundreds of billions or even trillions of parameters. For example, GPT-3 has 175 billion parameters, and Palm has 540 billion parameters. The total compute required to train and large language models can be approximated by the simple equation here. We can see it grows linearly with the model size and the data set size. Using this equation, you will find it takes over a decade to train a GPT-3 over one trillion tokens with a single DGX A100 node. So major players in this field build large-scale AI clusters over tens of thousands of GPUs to speed up training LMs. In the past, training deep learning models such as ResNet typically require tens of GPUs. However, in the context of LM training, a single job is occupying tens of thousands of GPUs, and the training duration can extend beyond several months. The new scale of LM training brings new challenges from a system perspective. The first challenge is to achieve high training efficiency at scale. In fact, LM training is not embarrassingly parallel. The model is split across nodes, and the GPUs heavily communicate with each other to make progress. Besides communication, other factors such as data preprocessing, training algorithm, and network performance also contribute significantly to the training efficiency. The second challenge is to achieve high training stability at scale. Even with, uh, even with over 10,000 GPUs, training an LM over one trillion tokens can take weeks. Failures and stragglers are the norm rather than the exception for ML training. At such a scale, the consequences of failures and stragglers are devastating. So to solve the two challenges, we build and deploy Megascale, a production system for training, for training LMs at the scale of more than 10,000 GPUs. Next, I will hand over to Yimin to introduce Megascale for you. So hi, I'm Yimin. Next, I'm going to show you the techniques we use in Megascale to solve the two challenges. To achieve high training efficiency, we first make a few modifications and incorporate recent optimizations at the algorithm speak level to improve training efficiency without compromising the model accuracy, such as parallel transformer block, sliding window attention, and LAM optimizer. To reduce the iteration time, we systematically analyze the dependencies between computation and communication for all the operators in 3D parallelism and try to hide the overhead of all the, criti of the critical path operations. Training data preprocessing and loading are often overlooked. However, these operations create a non-negligible GPU idle time at the beginning of each training step. We overlap the data preprocessing with previous steps gradient synchronization and adopt a two-layer tree-based data loading approach to optimize the loading process. In distributed training, 
the initialization phase involves the establishment of nickel communication groups among GPU workers. Since this overhead is relatively negligible in small-scale scenarios, Torch Distributed is used by default. However, we find the overhead quickly becomes intolerable as the number of GPUs scales to over 1,000. We optimize the Torch Distributed package and successfully reduce the initialization time from hours to 30 seconds on over 10,000 GPUs. As for network performance tuning, we carefully design the network topology and schedule network traffic to reduce the ECMP hashing conflicts. We also design a new congestion control algorithm to better ad adapt to the large language model training setting. Due to the time limit, I cannot talk about the technical details of all the optimizations here, but only summarize the core idea of each so you can refer to our paper for your interested part. Next, I will only dig into the communication overlapping optimization in 3D parallelism as a concrete example. So in a parallel transformer block, tensor parallelism is commonly used to partition weights in, the com in computational intensive operations like matrix multiplication, while operations like layer norm and dropout are partitioned along the sequence dimension to save GPU memory. This requires the all gather and reduce scatter operations for input collection and output redistrib redistribution across GPUs. Here, the two communication operators are in the critical path. To eliminate this overhead, we choose to fuse the all gather and reduce scatter with the parallel linears on the feed forward network path. Since the commutation CUDA kernels on the feed forward network path is large, this communication can be hidden better under the computation. We break the commutation kernel into small chunks and pipeline the commutation with the communication. Pipeline parallelism features point-to-point -point send and receive communication. Megascale uses the interleaved 1F1B scheduling method. We note that in the warm-up phase, the forward pass only depends on its previous receive. We thus decouple the send and receive, which are often implemented together and can be blocked by the slower one. By breaking this dependency, we enable the send operation to overlap with the commutation. The cooldown phase can be viewed as the inverse of the warm-up phase, allowing for the inverse application of the same technique. As for the steady phase, both the forward and backward commutation are independent of adjacent communication operations. Taking the backward as example, its previous receive is for the next forward commutation, while the send is for the backward commutation in the previous stage. So the send and receive operations can be launched asynchronously to overlap with the commutation. In data parallelism with zero redundancy optimization, the optimizer states, gradients, and model parameters are all sharded across GPUs. As a result, the traditional all reduced op operations that aggregate gradients are decomposed into separate reduced scatter and all gather operations. Before the forward pass, the all gather operation fetches the most recent model parameters from workers in other data parallel ranks, while after the backward pass, the reduced scatter operation collects the gradients. In 3D parallelism, a single device may host multiple model chunks. So overlapping is implemented on a model chunk basis to maximize the bandwidth utilization. The all gather operation is triggered prior to the forward pass of a, model, uh, of a single model chunk and the reduced scatter operation commences after its backward pass, which is overlapped with the commutation of other model chunk. So next, we move on to solve our second challenge, achieve high training stability at scale. We, we introduce a robust training framework for large language model training that achieves automatic fault identification and recovery, enabling fault tolerance with minimal human intervention and a negligible impact on ongoing training tasks. To achieve fast checkpointing, we introduce a two-stage approach to make a each GPU worker only write its own chip states to the host memory and then like a background process, asynchronously transferring the dead state from the host memory to a distributed file system for centralized maintenance. This decoupling allows the GPU workers to re resume training almost immediately after dumping their states. Although our robust training framework automatically discovers, pinpoints, and resolves the majority of common failures, 
this re uh, the remain certain hardware anomalies cannot be found by machine self-checks. Some anomalies may make the system appear to op operate normally, yet significantly degrades the training efficiency. To address these nuanced cases, we have implemented several custom monitoring and analysis, analysis tools designed to support case-by-case -case anomaly detection. Similarly, due to the time limit, I will only go through the uh, robust training workflow in detail. So upon receiving a submitted training task, the driver process interfaces with a custom Kubernetes to allocate computer resources and initiate the corresponding pod for each executor. Once the executor has completed a series of initialization tasks, it creates a, the training process on each GPU and a robust training daemon, which sends heartbeat to the driver periodically. These heartbeats encapsulate various forms of information to enable real-time anomaly detection and issue early warnings. When the driver process detects an abnormal status in the particular training process or fails to receive a heartbeat from an executor within a predefined time window, it triggers the fault recovery procedure. The driver will suspend the ongoing training task across all executors and command them to run a series of self-check tests. These diagnostic tests are carefully designed to be lightweight yet comprehensive covering the majority of common hardware and software faults. Once the problematic uh, nodes are identified, the driver submits the IP addresses of the nodes to be blocked, along with the information of the pods running on them to Kubernetes, which evicts the faulty nodes and replenishes the cluster with an equivalent amount of healthy ones, which pass our diagnostic tests. Additionally, we provide a user interface that allows for manual evictions of nodes, particularly for those identified through manual analysis. After the recovery process is complete, the driver resumes training from the latest checkpoint. The whole workflow is automatic, and in our production deployment, over 90% of faults can be automatically detected and resolved. So we built Megascale on top of Megatron LM and deployed it on the cluster with over 10,000 NVIDIA Ampere GPUs in, since early last year. Next, we will show our deployment experience in terms of its training performance, training stability, and the problems that we discovered and fixed. We first evaluated the strong scaling training performance of Megatron LM and Megascale on the 175 billion model by increasing the number of GPUs and maintaining a constant batch size. This experimental setting is realistic, given that the batch size is constrained by the convergence effects and cannot be infinitely scaled with the number of GPUs. From the table, we can see that Megascale achieves up to 1.35 times speedups over Megatron LM across all settings, enabling us to train the 175 billion model over 300 billion tokens in only 1.75 days. As for the training stability, we show that the model convergence curve from a real production run. This run trains a proprietary model with hundreds of billions of parameters on multi-trillion tokens. It uses more than 10,000 GPUs and lasts for several weeks. Distinct colors indicate the training is restarted. Over the several weeks of this run, we experience training restarts over 100 times. But with our robust training framework, over 90% of software and hardware faults are automatically identified and fixed, enabling us to achieve over 90% of uh, effective training time rate, which is calculated as, as the effective training time divided by the total training time. However, the rest of problems are handled with the help of our troubleshooting tools. One annoying problem we found is that specific hosts took approximately 10% more time to execute the same forward computation compared to, our, uh, compared to other tra uh, ranks due to hardware flaws. Just by isolating and removing these problematic straggler hosts from the cluster, we observed an appro approximate 0.7% improvement in model flaws utilization. Another strange phenomenon we observed is that the training efficiency did not remain consistent over time. Instead, as the training pro progressed, the model flops utilization of our training job 
gradually decreased. Digging deeper into the code, we attributed this irregularity to fluctuations caused by some code segments. For example, for example uh, irregular garbage collection can introduce disturbances into the training procedure, and certain PyTorch operations can lead to performance fluctuations. Just after modifying or removing these problematic code segments, we no longer observed a significant decline in model flux utilization. So in summary, scaling large language model training over 10,000 GPUs is a daunting task. We propose mega scale to achieve high training efficiency and stability at this scale. Although mega scale is an internal product in ByteDance, we are working actively to refactor its components to meet open source standard. You can check the GitHub repo link here to see our alternative timeline. We benefit a lot from the open source community, and we hope our experience can inspire future large language model system research. Thanks for listening. We are glad to take questions now.